Good morning, day four. So yesterday, a little recap here. We went to Salvation Army. After that, we went to Todd's yeah. camp, which is a little homeless camp. Then after Todd's camp, we went to Kroger-ish. Like Kroger-ish. Kroger-ish. We definitely went to Kroger. We did. And then we Kroger. bought snacks and such and got to pass those out. Little Debbie to fancy people. cakes. It was it was little Debbie. We did that last <laughs> night. That was awesome. We had a time of worship under a tree outside. There was like almost 20 of us. I led worship. It was great. Now today we woke up and we went to IHOP and got definitely not lost on the way there. Martin's running late. Don't need to be like completely ready. Raise your hand if you're completely ready. How are you? So she was just I am completely <laughs> ready. If you're completely ready, raise your hand. Wait, did and you, talk you about missed how one we person. Went downtown and the library. What's on the agenda? Neat. What's on the? We're going to the Children's Activity Center and the Houston Baptist University prayer meet. Not Yay! In that order. Not in that oh, but order. Uh, switch it. Switch it. But Pop. switch it around. Reverse. Switch reverse. <laughs> example about how to do this because the motivation for repentance can't be about the law it has to be about love love motivates us love sustains us love is what woos us love is what draws us it's got love from the cross that drew us to him and so we're going to take some time this morning and go through some segments and some people are going to lead us in personal reflection and personal re repentance. It's about love, not law. Don't hear us say it's about being perfect in our actions because it's not. It's about being perfected in his love. And in Psalm 139, it gives us a picture of David's encounter with the love of the Lord. And the Lord says to David, David, let me tell you who you are. David says, listen, Lord, I remember my history with you. We've got history together. How many of you have history with the Lord? We all do. And in spite of that history, the good and the bad, God says, let me tell you what I think about you, David. This is what he's saying to each of you. Let me tell you what I think about you, son and daughter. There's no place you can hide. There's no place you can go. There's nothing you can say. There's nothing you can do that will cause my love to turn away from you. Your darkness is as light to me. I knit you together in your mother's womb. I know you by name. I destined you and called you. This is the encounter David is having with the, with the Lord. And he ends that encounter with a simple question back to God, which always troubled me at first, and then I got a revelation. He ends Psalm 139 by saying this. After this incredible encounter, he says, Now, Lord, search me, try me, show me me. It was a personal prayer of repentance. Why? Because he knew anything in his life that he knew or didn't know, that was not confessed before the Lord and given to him would hinder his relationship with his God. It would get in the way of this. And anything that gets in the way of this hurts this. And we've got to have both. But it begins with the vertical with God. And so as we go into the next few times, some people are going to lead you. But this is about you and God. 
We won't get it all done. You'll begin a process. We'll lay things before the Lord so that when we come corporately and grab hands, we have taken care of our personal issues that we might ascend the hill of the Lord and come into His presence. So let's continue now in an attitude of personal repentance out of the love of God, not the law of God. I want to invite you at this time as we have an opportunity to respond to the Lord, returning to Him in personal repentance. We're asking Him from Psalm 139 to search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me into life everlasting. We're asking Him in this time to search us, to reveal sin within us, to convict us of sin, and we have the opportunity to respond to Him in this moment. During these next few sections, we would like you to grab hands with one or two around you, and uh, we will introduce a topic, and then we want you to pray together, even as we're praying here from the front. First topic is biblical illiteracy, and uh, you probably are aware the church is not full of the word the way we used to be. And we say, turn us to your word in this day, God, in this hour. Break our hearts for what breaks yours. That comes through reading the word of God. from a time of worship and prayer. Here's proof. Proof we are at Chick-fil-A. And we have Julia running to the vlog. What did we just do? Where did we Order Chick-fil-A. Oh, awesome. oh, wait, no, no. Um, Greater Houston Prayer, Solemn Prayer Assembly, right? Yes. It's a big name. We went there and had worship and prayer for a long time. How's it going, Sam? Where did we come from? We are at a prayer meeting. We were. We were at a prayer meeting. Prayer for life. I like how I'm telling you about a prayer meeting that you probably just saw a lot of. How ratchet do I look right now? Yeah. On a scale of one to ratchet. And where are we headed after this? CAC. Where are we headed? We're headed CAC to CAC Children's, Children's Activity Center. Center. And it's going to be awesome. Right, so cool. Well, we'll see you guys yeah, at the Children's Activity Center. Guys, welcome to the Children's Activity Center. Woo! Who's excited to hear from God's Word and have fun and play some games? All right, awesome, awesome. Guys, we love y'all. We're very, very thankful uh, for y'all participating and being here and to hear from God's Word. If we faint not, if we faint not, Galatians 6 9. Galatians 6 9. Yeah. <laughs> 
when you throw it directly at me while I'm not paying attention. It makes so Dude, much you should have seen the video. It was so much better.